One plus one, still two, right? That's right, Tallahassee. One plus one still equals two. This is Tim. This is Online Big Blue. Bring you the best of New York Giants sports talking entertainment. We got the playoffs all rocking in here. We got the vaunted Minnesota Vikings in the dome on Sunday, 425. Um, somebody asked me, Tim, and that's what people say to me when they ask me a question. Uh, are you going to Are you gonna stream the game? Are you going to do the live stream for the game? And I thought about it, and I thought about it for a little while. And I thought about it a little bit more. And yes, I decided I am going to do it. We did it once before. We had a really good time doing it. So I think we're going to do it again. So maybe like four o'clock, we'll start the stream before the kickoff. We'll do a little pregame, start the stream, and then and we'll stream the game. It'll be fun. Hope everyone ever turns out because last time it was a blast. Um, those that do not know, of course, uh, we've, we're getting ready to launch the new channel, which is Return to Gotham. New York sports talk. That's going to be fun. And um, people have asked the podcast is still not going away. So people that are still going to be looking for strictly giant content, the podcast is still up and the podcast is listed under um, uh, New York giant straight talk powered by online big blue LLC. You can find that anywhere that podcasts can be uh, found. So hopefully you guys will still enjoy that. We'll probably do it maybe once every week or once every two weeks. And we're going to make it like an hour long. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to have a lot of fun doing that. So there's a lot of fun stuff coming up, a lot of fun stuff coming around. And, you know, it's the Giants. It's the playoffs. It's 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 that it's that one game at a time mentality. And I have to love the fact that uh, Saquon Barkley has come out because Michael Strahan talked about it. It's one game at a time. You have to look at the opponent that you're playing. You don't have to look, you're not looking at the opponent ahead that could potentially be ahead of you. You got to look at the opponent that's in front of you because you don't, you get lost in the sauce. If you start thinking about what's going to happen after Minnesota before you even beat Minnesota. And I'm not saying the giants are going to beat Minnesota yet. We haven't even talked about that, but we're, we're going to probably talk about that on Saturday, but we want to go through the depth chart. We want to go, not the depth chart. We want to go through the injury report. I want to talk about the potential of the giants beating Minnesota because there is a history there is a history of, of, of that may be on the Giants' side. And I spoke about this briefly in the thumbnail, but there is a history. There is a, you have to look at the three and the six seed. And in the wild card tournament, in the matchup with the three and the six seed, there has been something interesting that went on between 2017 and 2021. The sixth seed has defeated the excuse me. The sixth seed has defeated the third seed eight out of ten times, going back, with only the third seed's victories coming in seventeen, which is interesting because it was when Jacksonville squeaked past Buffalo. Uh, so I, I think that's crazy if you if you look at that that that's kind of a crazy stat. And of course, seventeen is the last year of Tyrod Taylor as a starting quarterback in Buffalo. Jacksonville just beat him that year. I remember that year. But you think about it, 17, the Falcons beat the Rams, who was just again, it was a six and a three. And these are all six beats beating threes, 26, 13. Jacksonville was the only three to beat uh, the Bills when they were 10, three In 18, the Eagles beat the Bears. The Colts beat the Texans. 19, the Vikings, this is interesting though, the Vikings beat, which was a 60, beat the Saints. The Titans beat the Patriots. The Rams beat the uh, who they beat the Seahawks in 2020 and the Browns beat the Steelers in 2020 In 2021, the 49ers, if you remember upset the Cowboys and the Patriots got whacked by the bills. So, but that was a third seed beating a six seed. So in the recent history, like I said, eight out of the 10 times, this has happened. And the six seed has since 17, the six seed has won. I know it's things that make you go. Hmm. Now, you also have to look at the, who was the home team. So in a lot of regards, the home teams were, uh, or were the home teams were also, or, you know, but we're not going to get on the home teams because, you know, we want to keep this, we want to keep this a, 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 a possibility mode. That's what we want to keep this. We want to keep this a possibility mode. So there is, so if you go back in the annals of history over the last 10 years, like I said, eight out of 10 times, the 60 has beaten the third seed in the playoffs in the wild card of the playoffs. Now, if you go back into giant history, if you delve into the depths of giant history, I think every, you know, with us playing the mini and the mini, we're going to call them the mini Vikings, the Minnesota Vikings. Cause in 2020, we smoked them 41, nothing in New York. That was the one we were marching to, 
to, you know, in some ways marching to the, the buzzsaw to play the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I was at that game in Tampa. That, that was a bad game. That was a bad. I remember when Dixon returned the kickoff in the second half and everyone was like, ah, and then I went to get a beer and then the Baltimore had already scored. Um, but, you know, we did beat them in the conference championship 41 seven. I'm assuming 41 zero. And then we in the wild card in 97, which I remember, um, they beat us at home 23 22. And that was in the wild card game. That was on December 27th. And then if you go back to 93 in the wild card game, they lost to the Giants. They lost to us 10, excuse me, 17 10. So we have a history of playing the Vikings, and we have a history of playing the Vikings, though, at home. Uh, so going on the road is going to be a, is going to be a little bit different. But if you take a look, look at the Vikings record though, throughout the playoffs the last couple of years, you know it's it's one of those things that they've had a couple one and if you go back to two thousand eight they've had one two three four one and dones. Um, they've gotten to the division divisional finals uh, how many times one two three times, and they've lost in the divisional uh, excuse me in the divisional finals. Um, every time and they've lost pretty handily. I mean, they lost to the Eagles 38, seven, they lost in the 19, they lost to the pan, excuse me, who they lose to, uh, they lost to the 49ers 27, 10. And then you gotta remember that the Vikings have not been in the playoffs since 2019. So there is some history in reference to the giants, potentially having somewhat of an upper hand. I've said this before. I, I, I see this game and I see the talent that is on the Vikings team. And I see the talent that is on the giants team. And if you compare defensive talent to defensive talent, you have to pick the giants. If you're comparing offensive talent to offensive talent, you have to pick the Vikings. And I think that's what makes this such an interesting matchup. And if the Vikings can get the running game going, the giants are going to be in a lot of trouble if they can really get the running game going, because that is then going to open up play action and it's really going to depend on the injuries and depend on who's playing, who's not playing. We're not going to get a better idea that to to probably till Saturday, but right now, one of the saving graces for the giants are that uh, Garrett Bradbury, their center, a Viking starting center has a back issue. He was a full practice on Thursday. Uh, And if we take a look at the injury report, you got James Lynch, who's their no ta- nose tackle, was a full practice. Uh, Harrison Smith, who's the free safety, was limited in practice. Um, those are the guys we really need to look at. For the Giants, John Feliciano was a full practice. Adore Jackson was limited in practice. Aziz Ojolari was limited in practice as well. Jason Pincock was limited in practice. Same with Leonard Williams. Uh, Xavier McKinney was a full participant. Marcus Johnson was a limited in practice. And Evan Neal, was, which was kind of interesting with Evan Neal, he, he seemed to be fine, and then all of a sudden he's limited in practice. Um, and then he also missed Wednesday. So I, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what we have right now. Um, if you take a look at the injury report, because we are going to need Ojolari, we are going to need a Dory Jackson. You're going to need Leonard Williams and you're going to need Xavier, Xavier McKinney, because if you cannot slow down this passing attack, if you cannot slow down this running offense there, there's going to be problems. You know, I, I, I looked at it last week when they were playing the bears and uh, Dalvin cook, his, um, he looked like he tweaked something and, and I was hoping, and I shouldn't say that, but I was hoping it was, it was to the point where <laughs> he wasn't going to be able to play. Um, and I, and I know you, you don't, you don't want, you don't want, and that's, that's a lie. I was going to say, you don't want people not to play. You want to always play against their best. No, I want people not to play. I, I want the Giants to have the most advantage that they pers- that they completely can in regards to going up into Minnesota. I, I want to make sure that they have any advantage that they can. And if that advantage is having one of the the big time players out from the Minnesota Vikings, I'm I'm all good. I'm all good with that. I am all good with that. Um, just doing some interesting uh, news that came out, and I, I don't want to squash people's about DeAndre Hopkins, but uh, right now, if uh, it just came out in reference to Yahoo Sports, and like I said, I hate being the I hate to be the bearer of cap bad cap news, 
Uh, but right right now, teams have recently declared unused cap space in 2020, the lowest amounts of unused cap space in 2020, which is rolling over to 2023. Um, the Giants only have 1.5 million. The Rams are the lowest with 400,000. Uh, but the Giants are only are, are only rolling over 1.5 million. And this is and this is what I keep trying to tell people. You know, we're we're still in a rebuild. You you it's great to make the playoffs. It's fantastic to make the playoffs, but this is still a rebuilding team. This is te- a team that is still going to have issues in reference to um in reference to cap space going into 2023. And I keep seeing people like, well, you have to go out and get DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, guys, how are you gonna go out and get DeAndre Hopkins? You, 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 yeah, you're going to get out from underneath the, the contract for the smooth sounds of Kenny G. Sure. You're going to, you're going to get out with them then, but you're still going to need to, if you're going to resign your quarterback, if you, if you want to, if you're going to resign your running back, if you also have Julian love and Darius Slayton, which you need to resign, you have $11 million that you're going to have to have allocated for cap space. And Dion D has got two years, 34.3 million left on his contract and likely is looking for a new deal. So where do you think this money is coming from? And yeah, he's a five-time Pro Bowler, uh, three-time All-Pro, had six uh, thousand-yard seasons, I guess. Over the um, yeah, he had six thousand-yard seasons. He's got four seasons with over a hundred receptions in the last ten years. So he's going to want a new contract. But and he's had issues. He said he's had some problems with the league. He had he had the peed suspension. He, it's just not a good look for the Giants. It's just not a good fit. Because the fact that you you can want to sign everyone, but you just don't have the cap space. You just don't have the room. You just don't have the money. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of what people need to start thinking about. Because everyone wants to sign Daniel Jones. Everyone wants to sign Saquon Barkley. But then you're going to limit yourself on what you could do in free agency. And you still have a lot of holes on this team. I am worried, though, about... Um, about a player on the Vikings. I really am worried. Oh, what's his name? Hawkinson, TJ Hawkinson, the guy that came over from the bears. I'm not the bears the guys that came over from the lions. Uh, Jefferson is always going to put up big numbers. You got the other guy on the other side is going to put up big numbers. Um, but the giants have a problem containing the tight end. And this kid's good. This kid, this kid is good. This kid is, they, they, they had troubles last time containing him. They, he killed them with 13 receptions, 109 yards and two touchdowns. We don't really have, he is truly one of the best tight ends in the league. Um, even in with Xavier McKinney and some other players, we really don't have anyone that can cover him. We also, you know, and also if you're going to run Darren cooks out of the back, uh, doubtless you Darren cooks, Dalvin cooks out of the backfield. Um, the giants are going to have some issues looking at that as well, but he, TJ scares the living crap out of me. Because of the fact that he is a guy that the, the he we've already seen him rip through the Giants, and we've always we've already seen that multi you know in the last game, and he is just getting more and more acclimated with the with the offense, and he's just getting better and better each week, and it's one of those guys that if if as a Giant fan you're not you don't have a little bit of a fear and trepidation when you see him crossing the center of the field the center of the field it, it's going to be inter- it's going to be scary at times and i worry about like i said i worry about people coming out of the backfield as well so I uh, also want to give a big shout out to uh Dexter Lawrence for being you know he was voted the all pro by the players um so you know that that that's, that's always that's always good for sexy dexy because you know what he, he is a guy that deserves it. He is a guy that has played well. He, is, he figured out how to play. Um, he really figured out how to play for this team after Dalvin Tomlinson left. I, 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 so I'm excited for him as well. You also have to give a big shout out to Andrew Thomas. And as the pro football focus says, Andrew Thomas, the NFL's most consistent, excellent left tackle this season, racking up 89.4 pro football focus grade at a hunt at 1,049 snaps, had just one below average pre football PFF pass blocking grade all year. And that came against Parsons against the Dallas Cowboys. Thomas registered just two penalties all season, including centering 20 and center 21 total pressures over 600 pass blocking attempts. You know, it's a fa- it's funny that he doesn't make the pro bowl, but he's an all pro. You know, it is it is what it is. You got to give big kudos to Andrew Thomas because there was a lot of Andrew Thomas doubters. I was never one of them because I always felt that you could see the talent was there, but there was a lot of Andrew Thomas doubters over the first two years of his career, and he's proven everybody wrong. So you got to give big shout out and big kudos to Andrew Thomas. Um, we just got to get ready for Minnesota. 
We just have to stay focused. We have to look at the opponent that's in front of us, kind of like Michael Strahan's been saying. We have to look at that opponent. We have to not worry about what's going to happen next week because, you know, next if we don't take care of this week, next week's never going to come. We are going to be doing the podcast, not the podcast. We are going to live stream the game on Sunday, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And uh, you know what? Let's hopefully that uh, hopefully we can push back the end of online Big Blue because um, I mentioned before the channel will be going dark three days after the giant season concludes. Uh, well, we will we will do a final live stream. So let's hope we keep pushing that date back further and further. Hopefully we push it back to after the Super Bowl. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue bringing you the best of New York Giant Sports Talk Entertainment. And as always, you click. Like, Subscribe if you ring that bell, you can use it.